my name is Ben. I come from digital imaging at Sony Europe. So I deal with all of our consumer digital imaging products, our SLRs, our compact cameras, our camcorders, and so on. Now, what we did introduce a few months ago, which you may or may not have seen, was the AX1. Has anybody seen this before or not really? We've got, oh, we've got one yes, one a little bit, and so on. Um, so this was our first consumer 4K Handycam, which when you look at it, you think, yes, that is a consumer 4K <laughs> Handycam. I'm going to put one of those in my back pocket. I'm going to go out onto the streets, see lots of Japanese tourists, recording lots of footage, and it'll be the typical thing you see with all the tourists in town and so on. Um, admittedly, like I say, it can look quite complicated. It is very advanced in terms of what it can do. So it has lots of manual options for iris, should speed, ISO, gain, lots of assists on there like zebra, peaking, and so on. It records in 4K in the XAVCS format. So I don't know if you will be familiar with that or not. A lot of our professional camcorders use the XAVC format. The XAVCS format is a more consumer friendly version. It's slightly more compressed, but it still has high quality. So to give you an idea, um, a 64 gigabyte card of XAVC with our professional 4K camcorders will give you about 14 minutes. Okay, 14, one four. So there's so much information, there's so much data because it needs to be that professional standard really reaching up high. You get out 14 minutes on a 64 gigabyte card. Now with XAVC-S, shooting the same, this is talking like say 60p frame rate or 50p, you get about an hour. So it's a lot more consumer friendly. Uh, in terms of for this particular model, the media we used is XQD. So this was actually introduced to the market by Sony, Nikon and SanDisk. We were the first ones, Sony, to launch the XQD card, um, but there's already other products in the market which use it. So, for example, the Nikon D4 professional digital SLR uses XQD um, cards on there as well. It's very, it's, it's designed so it to be very stable and very quick. We would have used SD cards if we could have done, but they weren't quick enough. So, we use XQD cards with two slots. Um, it has relay recording, so once one goes full, it goes straight onto the other and simple. And if you're very eagle-eyed, you'll also notice, I'll put it in the right way, we do have an SD card slot on there, which might sound a bit confusing from what I've just said. That's because we're going to do a firmware update for this, so it can do ABC HD in high definition. So you will be able to record ABC HD in high definition. Currently, you can do 4K in XABCS, and you can even do high definition in XABCS, which gives you 50 megabits per second, very high quality, high definition footage. And this format is currently supported by lots of that's editing software it's from ourselves. Of course, I would always recommend Sony Vegas, but other NLE uh, providers are available and compatible with XABCS. So we introduced this a little bit more than six months ago. Now from there, we've advanced a little bit in terms of the size and the consumer friendliness. So now, this, this is our latest 4K consumer camcorder. A little bit friendlier than what you have with the AX1. So this, like I say, can record 4K in the XAVC-S format we mentioned before. It can't do 60p and 50p like we have here. It can do 24p and 25p. Um, and one of the key things about this, as well as being able to do 4K, is the sensor size. It uses what we call the one-inch type sensor. Have you, have you ever heard of that? Just to explain so you all understand. Um, ah, OK. <laughs> So in a normal consumer camcorder, your sensor size is smaller than this one in a normal consumer camcorder, high definition, smaller than that. That sensor size is what we use in the AX1. So it's called a, this one's called a one over 2.3 inch type sensor. A bit of a mouthful. Now, what we actually have on the AX100 here is the one inch type sensor. So this size of sensor, like I say, is about four times bigger than this one. It's going to catch them more light, be better in low light, better dynamic range. And then also, if you want a shallow depth of field, a defocused effect in the background, it can be really good at creating that defocused effect. So what we've got inside this consumer camcorder, so you can have a, you guys see, you can have a quick look. This has better sensors than the D1. It has, well, that's a good question. It's different usage. It's different usage, because what you get from here, you might say, well, this sensor is a lot smaller. I mean, why would I go for this one? But 
for this yeah. style of camcorder, yeah. you get a lot of reportage, new news, documentaries, who would absolutely yeah. love this camera, yeah. absolutely love yeah. this camcorder, yeah. what it can offer on the job in terms of advanced functionality. And it can also, don't forget, this one can do 60p and 50p. It's going to do a high frame rate, whereas this one uh, doesn't, uh, does 24 and 25, so not, not as much, but it does have a big advantage. Like I say, we've developed in just a few months a very large image sensor doing 4K in a small compact body. Yeah, we, I mean, the way we see it, we see, exactly. But <laughs> admittedly, when we were first launched this one, we were told, you know, like, oh, this is consumer, this is consumer, of course it is, because it's come from our consumer side, as we said. Um, but admittedly, a lot of people will look at the AX1 and think, that is not consumer. But the AX100, we really try and target both sides. So if you're somebody who's a semi-professional videographer, you want to make some beautiful films, but do it in 4K at, on a, you know, like I say, with something that does not, it's not going to cost the earth and is small and compact, this has advanced functionality. So you can, on here you can control the iris, you can control the gain and the ISO, you can control the shutter speed, you have a dial here to control those manually, you can adjust, you have a ring around the zoom lens, which can be used for zoom or it can be used for focus. So if you want to do things manually on this camera, you have control and quick access. Yes, yes. But on the other hand, if you are a normal consumer, maybe our stereotypical handicam consumer who has new children, Christmases, holidays, you know, those precious moments, and you want to record footage in the best possible quality, this can work completely automatically. I mean, I'm sure you'll agree in terms of scariness, one versus the other, it, it looks a lot more simple, even not, not just the size, but in terms of the amount of buttons and how simple it is on there. It's nice and easy. We have autofocus, manual focus, so you can easily change between the two. Program AE means auto exposure, and that will just take care of everything for you. Now, on top of that, we also offer an OLED viewfinder. A lot of consumer camcorders don't have a viewfinder built into them. Ones which do quite often have maybe a low resolution LCD viewfinder. This has a 1.4 million dot OLED viewfinder, so you can try it out for yourself if you like. Um, and that, like I say, is an OLED unit built into there. So whether you're in bright sunlight, whether you prefer stable traditional composition, you can you can use that viewfinder built in. Not currently, not currently, not ourselves. There may be third parties out there which offer that. Yeah, of course. Like I say, it can prioritise the face, so that will be also not just for focus, but also for exposure. We're very well backlit here, and like I say, it uses the Carl Zeiss Vario Sonar T-style lens, f 2.8, so very bright, very good quality. To give you an idea of the quality of the footage, I will show you a movie on here. Well, there are, like I said, there are, special, there are specialty third parties who are very good at doing that as well. So this here is, um, do you want me to grab that as a beta? So this here, like I say, is uh, one of uh, our groups of footage taken with the AX100. This is just edited together. There's no special effects done onto this. We just put our logos onto it. You can see the defocus effect that you can create if you want in front or behind your subjects. You don't have to. No, no. This is the AX100, this one. Yeah. That small thing that's in your hands there has recorded this footage that's going on here. 4K footage, and then, like I say, because of the large sensor, you can blur out the background. If you're in bright conditions, you also have ND filters built into it, which is more an advanced kind of feature you'd expect on a um, professional or semi-pro camcorder, and all that is built into it. Of course, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, of course you're going to show me a nice demo video because <laughs> you're not going to bring me here and show me a bad demo video. So what I want to do now is let's see it live in action so you guys can see the quality, not just on a pre-prepared video for us. So I'm going to pass that back to Ed. I'm going to come through to the flowers behind you. Now why is he like the wrong <laughs> You do get more, more options, like I say, on this one. But this is, I'm going to come between you guys, and I'm going to go up to the, uh, the flowers here. So this is going to output a 4K, this is going to output a 4K signal um, onto your screens. And hopefully, as long as nobody trips over my cable, you should be able to see. Just give me a second to, uh, back to focus. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And you can see the detail brought in on here. Now, it will actually focus down to one centimeter away from uh, your subject. So you can get really close into things.
And then can you see there also, there's a defocused effect in the background. I could even defocus that more if I wanted to, or I could defocus it less as well. So if you're wanting to create that filmic look, then you can get it really easily onto here as well. Uh, let me check. It's on autofocus. Um, this is now auto oh, this is fully automatic at the moment now. So it's everything automatic. I'm not. Yeah, you can say this. You can pull it away. It's refocusing. You see here on the front part. We can bring it. No, you can even press on subjects. So if you look at the screen here, I can press on the screen, and now it's l actually. If you see. It's not showing up on the um, TV, but if you look on my LCD screen, you can see the square that comes up. And when I move around, you can see it's, track, it's tracking that, that as a point of focus. So this is around 2,000 euros. Or if I come back out here, if you guys, do you guys want to see yourselves in 4K? <laughs> So you can see your individual hairs coming up. Especially the grey ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can see, like I say, that's, again, I'm on automatic here. I'm not doing anything at all. Just zooming in, zooming out. And it's nice and simple. Do you guys want to try get a hand on it? Like I say, you can, either, you, you can either record some footage so I can disconnect you from the cable if it makes it easier for you. So, um, for this footage, you can, uh, the footage we had before, so we've got it on USB, and then on USB, you can also, like say, HDMI shows up as well, um, and if you want to connect up to, sorry, and if you want to connect up to, <laughs> um, if you, you can also connect uh, compatible PCs as well, outputting, as long as they can output sort of the HDMI up onto those as well. Um, I think it, I need to check. I need to check with the, our TV, our TV guys, because for the exit. Uh, I think the televisions are capable of HEVC decoding. Um, XAVCS is not. Uh, um, not sure whether it's. I need to check. I need. I need to check with our. But he's talking about. But HDMI output is fine. But I need to. I need to check um, with our TV guys about. Uh, the playback. Uh, so we have no idea about camcorders, but the uh, scene mode, like in a still camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look at that, it has got scene mode built into it. it in its auto mode, it will do things, it will actually automatically go into different scene modes. So for example... Does it have an underwater mode? Um, if we might, I need to check. We might have a mo mode for underwater white balance, actually. Which is just shooting red and... and, and mm. We might have, I need to check. But we, we normally... We normally we, we do normally integrate uh, an, an underwater white balance into our into our products, even when we don't provide uh, an underwater housing for them. So I, w I can check that for you if you want. But uh, perfect, I will do the check. <laughs> but no, I mean, like I say, we don't provide uh, an underwater housing ourselves. But like I say, there's part of the reason that is also because there's some very good third-party manufacturers who do this. Then yeah, they're good quality, but they're not so cheap. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I think I need to move you guys on because I think we're running behind here. But they're not finished. I know they're not finished, but they keep going. And everyone keeps going until we say we've got to move on. So I need to tell them that we need to be looking to move on, actually. Uh, so next year, it's, it's, it's totally feasible that a camera of this size would do 50p? Um, potentially. One of the things you, one of the problems you encounter um, can also be heat dispersion, because doing 4K footage actually generates a lot of heat from the sensor. So for the, the AX1, for example, the big one on the left, that does, like, say, 60p and 50p. And actually, with the sensor reading out, 60p uh, 4K continuously generates a lot of heat. Our engineers told us that camcorder should be four times the size. Well, they actually integrated a fan. So if you look on the back, you see here, there's a fan built into it. Now, you'll notice the fan, of course, we try and make it as quiet as possible. We give it cushioning so that no vibrations are caused through the camcorder. Mm -hmm. And we also place it as far away from the microphone as possible. So that one, like I say, that's capable of doing the uh, 4K and 60p or 50p. But a lot of a lot of the issue to that 
to achieving that as well is the heat that's generated by it. You consider with the AX100, uh, not only is it a much smaller body, but we've also got a much bigger sensor, which is going to generate more heat. So it's, that's one of the challenges as well with 4K footage. Uh, that's, like I said, I can't promise anything as to what will happen. I'm not saying it will, I'm not saying it won't, but it, it, it's, it's a potential possibility. Um, hello, my name's Sam. Um, I work for Sony UK in the imaging department, so I know quite a bit about the cameras and not so much about the TVs, although from playing with them, they're very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, what I wanted to talk about to you guys was 4K still images. Um, in the UK, we've been making 4K still images for a very long period of time because you only need an 8 megapixel shot in order to have a 4K image. The resolution of this TV screen is effectively the same as 8 megapixels. However, this year we started putting on all of our devices for the first time 4K output via both Wi-Fi and HDMI. So if I go on holiday and I want to share my pictures with my friends and family when I get back, then plugging my camera into the TV via HDMI cable is the easiest way of sharing my images, or simply just Wi-Fiing them straight to the TV. That means I can use a large format screen, and I can shoot in 16 by 9 as well as 3 by 2 if I want, but I can use a large format screen in order to share my images quickly with all my friends and family. That and the image quality. If you look at this flower here that I've shot, you can see the real detail in the centre of the flower. Now, that's the way you'd want it to look. And if I switch this camera back to standard definition, sorry, high definition, then you can see the difference. This is full 1080, and this is what we're used to seeing on these big panels. But as screen size get bigger, that ability from both our Cybershot cameras, our alpha interchangeable lens cameras, and of course our handy cams, to be able to show images in true 4K means your experience is that more immersive. If I just switch back in so you can see the difference. Now, as well as having great sharing applications, such as you know, showing your pictures to your friends and family, it also has practical uh, shooting solutions as well. Imagine if I was taking these pictures in a studio and I was using it for professional work. If I wanted to set a very narrow depth of field on the camera, if you look at this particular picture, it looks, whoops, it looks identical to the previous one. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm using a very shallow depth of field, only certain parts of this picture, there you are, Tom. They look identical on the screen of the camera. I'm sure you're guessing where I'm going to go with this, but if I want to review which areas of the picture are in focus as a whole, I've got two options. I can use the camera and I can zoom into each area and inspect it line by line, or if I compare the two images instantly on a big screen like this, then again, 4K has a really great professional solution of being able to review my images. Image number one, the real focus of my picture, you can now see it's completely different from our last image. The center of the flower, our focal point, is out of focus. Switch to image two, whoops, <laughs> wrong way. Switch to image two, and it's a completely different image. Now, I'm not saying you can't use the camera to go back and review these images, but all of a sudden we know that this area is in focus. This area is in focus. The really nice narrow depth of field has created these really smooth, defocused backgrounds. And what I'd like to invite you guys to do is actually try it out. You know? All of these cameras are capable of 4K output. There's a nice bunch of flowers over there. If you want to actually try pointing and shooting, and then oops, we'll just switch it back to normal. Any one of these cameras and our Cybershot range are capable of 4K output. So have a play with them, have a go. Bring them back and let's have a look. <laughs> and rewind. <laughs> about triluminous before. Really? Yeah. The cameras can output in triluminous. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it means practically nothing. Yeah. So, I expect a lot of, well, they should expect a lot of questions after. Can you do it before and after, can you? It's just off. You can't turn it on the top. We have to have a compatible TV, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's basically just it's, it's a container. It's like, you could call it a colour gamut if you wanted to, but... Sure, we just got that all on mic, so uh, make sure you delete that off afterwards. Thank you. 
because this one is, uh, is actually already set to 16 by 9. So that's high definition, that's what we're used to. Switching again to 4K. You can see this is nice and sharp, and you can see the details in the flowers. That's nice as well. And of course, we can run a slideshow if we want to from the camera. We can transfer video uh, wirelessly using Wi Fi direct if we want. But that, that, good photo. You can really see the detail in these pictures. Um, can you switch back to full HD? Yep, just hold on a sec. So if you look into these areas here, we know the details there, and if we hadn't compared it to 4K previously, you'd never know. But if you're ready, I'm going to switch back. Same areas. Yeah. It's sharp as the edges. And it also, from a professional side of things, if you're shooting with a very narrow depth of field, small areas of focus, quickly tell which areas are in focus, but also allows us to see the quality of the the Japanese tend to call it the bokeh effect. The, the quality of the background defocusing, whether you've got a smooth background defocus, whether your aperture blades are causing distortion. With an optical viewfinder digital SLR, that's actually difficult to preview using the camera because you have a focusing screen in between you and the subject matter. Yeah. By having a live preview, well, not a quite a live preview, but an actual a rendering of the image we've taken, we can instantly see you know, the tiny details, the sharpness, it's a great way of shooting and reviewing our images, especially as a whole image taking the whole picture instantly, which, yes, the LCD screen can reproduce the image, but if you want to take it all at the same time and see which areas are in focus, 4K is a fantastic tool professionally, as well as having the great way of sharing your, your pictures with your friends and family at home. Should we have a look at some of the other pictures? Has anybody got any questions, by the way? Would there be any difference if you uh, take a picture and with like 20 megapixels or with 8 megapixels? Do you see any difference in there? Like, I don't know, color or? The, the, the rendering is done inside the camera. So if you're talking about the same camera taking the same picture, then not realistically. You might see a slight difference in the amount of noise captured by the camera at the camera's end, but TV-wise, the TV performance would be exactly the same. Uh, one thing you can do though, of course, is there's a cracking picture that someone's taken here of a flower. In fact, it might be one I took. But if you want to zoom into these images, you know, we're outputting here in 4K, but we're capable of zooming even further into this image. So this, this is a 4K image on the screen now. That's 8 million pixels. This is a 36 million pixel camera, so we can actually go a lot further in. So if I hit the zoom button on here, you can get even closer. Okay, so... Um, or can I take native UHD pictures? Uh, it would be nice for, for, um, for time to I see what you mean. Um, let's have a quick look, because off the top of my head, I'm not that familiar with the ratios of the... If I switch it to 16 by 9, see what these... So, almost native. Almost native. But, you'd be far better off shooting in 30 because it'll give you so many more editing options afterwards so you you mentioned time lapse fantastic way of doing time lapse is actually to shoot, uh, you have to download a separate application but it will do time lapse oh, you didn't expect me to say that did you uh, <laughs> no 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 um, these these cameras you can download applications to them it's called it's called play memories apps and it's absolutely fantastic. See, I love talking about cameras. TVs are wonderful and beautiful, but these are my passion. These cameras, all of our interchangeable camera range in the, uh, in the A5000, the A6000, uh, the Alpha 7, the Alpha 7R, all the ones that we have in front of us here, you can down applications to them over Wi-Fi. That includes a time-lapse application, it includes a bracketing application if you're into particular styles of photography, a photo editing application, an uploading application that supports different file hosting. Absolutely. I tell you what, rather than interrupt on the TV's time, if you're interested, I will show you because it's fantastic. You set the interval 
any time between every second up to every minute, and the total number of photos taken anywhere up to 990 photos. You select the output format. That's not a lot. Uh, it, well, it depends on what sort of. It depends if you're shooting continue shooting. But that's not time lapse. <laughs> oh, so you, I see what you mean. So you mean you've, when you render it back afterwards? Arguably, yes. But if you are shooting. If you are shooting something which is, <laughs> it, it depends which way you're looking. I mean, if you if you're shooting something that's a frame every second, then yeah, you are going to need a, you, you, yeah, you're still going to you're going to need an awful lot of content then, I guess, to generate that. Yeah, fair enough. You would have to start it all over again. That's <laughs> that would be thirty. Yeah. Well. I guess I guess it's very, if you shoot it, it's something that shoots every single second, then you are going to be very intensive on the battery as well. So you're going to need the power adapter as well. Um, the key thing is though, you can set whether you want 24p, 25p, 30p, still images at the end of it. But what I was going to say is, if you're shooting in high resolution, if you want to do a panning shot, rather than try and put, I know you can get he camera heads which automatically move, but a nice little way of doing that is shoot in a high resolution and crop your pan and your zooms out the resulting time lapse. So. That's actually pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks great. I've, I've, I've got one on YouTube myself. But yeah, uh, it, it's, it's nothing to do with the TVs, but it's a nice little function.